The new Zeppelin takes an already legendary speaker and makes it even better. But can Bowers and Wilkins take back the crown in an already saturated market? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Jonathan from SHS here, and today is quite a monumental day as we've got the brand new Bowers & Wilkins Zeppelin wireless speaker in the studio. Now, you might be familiar with the Bowers & Wilkins Zeppelin from its first rendition released back in 2007, as uh, this was one of B&W's most iconic product releases ever, taking 90% of all sales of wireless speaker docks over 500 pounds. Now it's since been updated further in 2011 and then again in 2015, but this new release takes it fully wireless, adding some more streaming options along the way. It features an upgraded design, including new drivers and tweeters, offers support and support for 24 bit, 96 kilohertz and more. But is this speaker worth a relaunch or just has it had its day? Well, I've been testing it over the last few days and have a lot of thoughts to share. And I've also compared it with the similar looking Bowers & Wilkins Formation Wedge. So I'll share all my thoughts on that as well. Now, if you are interested in this product, then I'll pop the links below for you. Unfortunately though, if you are in the UK, this is a John Lewis exclusive. So if you have a preferred retailer, unfortunately, you'll have to either go to John Lewis or Bowers & Wilkins to purchase the Zeppelin at the moment. We feel this will be disappointing to a lot of customers, but I suppose John Lewis do have a good Christmas ad. Anyway, with that being said, let's get right into the video. As always, if, you, if you're just here for a sound demo, then feel free to skip ahead to that. So to introduce the Zeppelin to you, if you've not come across the original before, the basis of the Zeppelin is that it's a purely wireless streaming speaker. So there's absolutely no connections on it other than power. So if you're the sort of person who doesn't really care for connecting lots of wires up and listening in the traditional analog way, and you want a speaker that you can take out of the box and start streaming to it, no fuss, straight away with great sound quality, then this is certainly worth a look. It's sold for £699 RRP, which is priced well and truly in the premium speaker category, but is comparable with the price point of the previous Zeppelin, so that's no bad thing. It also comes in a choice of midnight grey or pearl grey, and interestingly, Bowers & Wilkins had already released the Formation Wedge for 899, which we initially assumed was the replacement to the Zeppelin, but it turns out the Zeppelin lives on. Now, What Hi-Fi recently gave the Zeppelin a four-star review, praising it for its weighty bass and performance at high volumes, which I'd certainly agree with, but I think we can delve in a bit deeper today. So if we take a closer look at the Zeppelin then, you can see that they have retained a similar style to the original, which can probably be most likened to a rugby ball or American football, depending where you're watching. But interesting fact, it is actually designed after a Zeppelin airship. Now you've got the classic Bowers & Wilkins logo etched on the front and this new stand, um, which is actually a new design feature. And I think it's reminiscent of an Apple Mac, which again is definitely no bad thing. Another good thing about this stand is that it takes the speaker off the surface to reduce surface vibration. And that always helps with isolation from the furniture it's sat on. Now the material of the grill is a hard wearing cloth and some will like that and others won't, I guess, but I definitely have confidence that this won't show wear and tear anytime soon. And you have also got touch controls on the top of the unit. Uh, you won't be able to see them from where you know, you're watching this video, um, and they actually replace the remote control found in previous generations of the Zeppelin. And those touch controls consist of play pause, volume controls, a multi-function button, which pulses different colors depending on what state the speaker is in, and then a circular button, which can mute the microphone if it's held down for five seconds. And that will also then change the color of the LED light on the bottom to red. Now I must say these buttons aren't always the easiest to see, and you might find you need to memorize the order that these buttons come in, or just pop your head over the speaker to find the button that you want. One comment I would like to make about its design is that you might need to pre-plan where you're going to situate the speaker because it's not a traditional speaker design and its total width comes in at 65 centimeters and you'll also need a depth of 19.4 centimeters and an available height of 21 centimeters. You're also looking at a weight of six and a half kilograms so it's by no means light. 
Now we found it looked the best on a dedicated stand or console table, but I can also imagine it on a bookshelf. It is designed as a centerpiece sort of speaker, one that you deliberately want to have on show and not one that's tucked away out of view, simply because it just demands to be seen. So I've actually got a surprise for this next bit for you. Now if I plug it in, Is it on? So, second time lucky, watch this. Ta-da! So as you can see, there's quite a nice little striking LED light, um, and that illuminates when you connect to the speaker, which I actually really appreciate. It just adds to the presence of the speaker. It's not tacky like I've seen on a lot of other speakers, and personally, I really enjoy this addition to the design. Now you can adjust its brightness in the Formation Music app, or just disable it completely if you'd rather see it off. Now underneath, you've got two 25 mm double dome tweeters taken from the 600 anniversary series, which is new for this version of the Zeppelin. You've got two 90 mm mid-range drivers, which give you a dedicated left and right stereo soundstage, and the materials are taken from their latest drivers in their range. And finally, a nice large 150 mm subwoofer for the bass in the middle. And I must say, I think uh, Bowers and Wilkins have designed this driver array very well. Now these drivers combine to offer 240 watts of output in total, which is more powerful than previous models. Now I do take the actual wattage with a pinch of salt as it only represents power rather than how the speaker actually sounds, but this speaker is definitely more powerful than its predecessors. Bowers & Wilkins are renowned for making some of the highest quality drive units on the market, with its wireless formation range taking components from its highly respected hi-fi cabinets and then combining, combining wireless control into them. So let's touch on some of the features that you get with the Zeppelin then. So as mentioned, this is a wireless only product, so you'll be streaming via AirPlay 2, Bluetooth 5.0, Aptex, Spotify Connect, Amazon or through the supported services in the music app. And they currently consist of Tidal, Deezer, Cobuzz, SoundCloud, and TuneIn Radio. And Bowers and Wilkins have already commented that they are looking to expand this list of services to give more choice for us in the form of software updates. So if you pay for any of those services, you can import your account into the app and then stream from there. But you may just find it more convenient to stream from AirPlay 2 or Bluetooth, for example. And if you pay for high res on any of those services, the Zeppelin can actually output it up to a maximum of 24-bit 96 kilohertz resolution, which is quite handy if, like me, you're eagerly anticipating Spotify Hi-Fi. Finally, I would say the music app feels premium and it does offer a nice user interface. Now to set the Zeppelin up, you'll just use the Bowers & Wilkins music app and if you have other Formation products at home, the Zeppelin will also feature as a groupable product in the Formation app at the start of next year. Meaning if you own any Formation products currently, this can fit right into the system and be grouped at the tap of a button. In the meantime, you can still group the Zeppelin with other Formation products by taking advantage of Apple AirPlay 2. Um, but do note that you won't be able to stereo pair two Zeppelins together though. And lastly, being a Wi-Fi enabled product, it is important to reiterate that software updates in the future will ensure your Zeppelin is as future-proofed as possible. Now, I'm sure you're gonna be keen to hear the speaker for yourself, so let's get this playing some music for you. Now, we will be using our binaural microphone to play some tracks through the Zeppelin, and while it is a very quality microphone, it won't translate as well over YouTube to your devices as being here with me in the room. So if you do have some headphones or a decent audio system to listen to, uh, this next segment out of, I'd highly recommend pausing the video now and going and grabbing those. For copyright reasons, I'll only be uh, able to use non-copyright tracks that we like to use for testing.
So I hope you found that useful. Now, there are quite a few pointers that I had on the sound quality, so let's see if you agree with me. Starting off with the positives, I personally found the speaker to sound great overall with an impressive presence, which makes it ideal for parties or filling a room well. Because the Zeppelin has more power than ever before, this is probably one of the most capable speakers that I've tested at higher volumes. So if you like to listen uh, loud, then you won't be disappointed with the Zeppelin. Bass comes across really tight and well controlled even at the highest of volumes. Um, I really don't feel that you need to add a subwoofer as there is plenty there, which I think will satisfy even the most avid bass hunters. Now you can also adjust the bass and treble in the formation app or the music app, um, which will step it up even more and that is new for this Zeppelin. I'd also like to commend the Zeppelin for its vocals. Um, they are just crisper and clearer than ever due to those new tweeters. And if you've heard of Bowers & Wilkins product before, you'll be used to the Bowers & Wilkins signature sound, which this speaker certainly offers. It's so detailed and you can hear each instrument separately. It doesn't all mush into one, which you sort of find in cheaper speakers. I do have a couple of downsides though. I did find that the performance of the Zeppelin did vary between different genres. I found that electronic, R&B, instrumental, um, pop, charts, jazz, and classical, they all sounded excellent. But with rock and heavier sounding music, I felt the Zeppelin did, didn't really justify its 699 price tag. I also would have liked a bit more width considering how wide the speaker is, um, but I think it may have helped if the drivers on the edge were maybe facing outwards. I would say the soundstage is no wider than the product, which means that ideally you're going to want to position your seating directly in front of it to get the best experience. Now, I mentioned the formation wedge at the start of this review, and I've done some comparisons between that and the new Zeppelin. So if I just grab the wedge to show you, oh, it's just being given to me, even better. All right, let's just... So as you can see, they're quite similar in appearance, but the wedge is not quite as wide, but instead it's deeper. And you can see it's designed to sit more in a corner. On the whole, I do think it's a bit more premium feeling than the Zeppelin, but the wedge is priced £200 more than the Zeppelin at £899. So naturally, like me, you'll be asking, does the wedge sound £200 better than the Zeppelin? Well, let's see what you guys think. Grab those headphones again and I'll see you in a few seconds. Now for me, the sound comparison with the Wedge told me more about the Zeppelin than my testing of that alone. Overall, I do think you have more bass in the Wedge and the vocals get even cleaner. The soundstage is a bit wider as well because four of the drivers are sort of pointing outwards. At the moment, I personally think the Wedge does sound £200 better than the Zeppelin, but because the prices start at 699 for the Zeppelin, I think Bowers & Wilkins are asking a lot at 899 particularly because of the number of competitors in the market and what that money can get you. I think it is an interesting one because the Wedge hasn't actually been very popular. I'm presuming that's due to its higher price tag and unusual form factor, but this has actually been one of my favourite speakers over the last few years. This is not your mainstream speaker, which is what I find appealing about it, and I just love the sound of the wedge. It does make me ask the question of whether Bowers & Wilkins felt like the wedge was too different compared with the Zeppelin, and they've now gone back to what they know to try and regain its popularity. Obviously, the layout of your room and budget will be big deciding factors in which speaker to go for out of these two, as they will be positioned differently, and there is a £200 price difference. I'd say if you can snap up a deal on the wedge to close down the gap between this and the Zeppelin, then go for the wedge, especially if the design fits your home. So what's our verdict on the all new Bowers & Wilkins Zeppelin then? Well, Bowers & Wilkins have done a great job of evolving the Zeppelin to bring it up to date with its latest technology and enhancing its streaming capabilities. I'd say if you own any of the previous generations of the Zeppelin, or you're already invested in the Bowers & Wilkins ecosystem, this may makes perfect sense as an upgrade for you, as Bowers & Wilkins have elevated what it has already done before. 
As streaming becomes ever more popular and ever more demanding on speaker hardware, if you want to get the very best streaming quality, there does come a time where you need to upgrade your speaker to benefit from a better processor and ultimately better sound quality. Secondly, if you are coming from a Bowers & Wilkins Hi-Fi loudspeaker background and you're looking to get rid of all of those cables in favor of streaming, then you will love this new Zeppelin. I think the Zeppelin is a very complete speaker and it has everything that the avid streamer could possibly want. However, it does come at a cost. For that reason, I would also add to that that if you are fresh into the market and are looking at your best options for a wireless speaker, um, there is plenty of competition out there already in the premium wireless speaker market. Ultimately, you're gonna need to work out if the Zeppelin will be an investment for you or if the cost doesn't justify what you need it for. This is for actively listening loud, taking pride of place in your home and being the cornerstone of your audio setup in your home. If you only need it for casual listening, then I don't think you'll need to spend 699 to achieve that. On the other hand, if you do think you're one of those people who love to listen loud, then I would also look at the Bowers & Wilkins Formation Wedge, which I showed previously, if that budget can stretch to 899, as this takes all the benefits of the Zeppelin and just takes it up another notch. What I would have loved though is maybe the sound profile of the wedge to be what you get from the Zeppelin and then both price points to be reduced slightly to make that decision a bit easier for us. Having said all of that, it must be said this is an excellent speaker and it will be right for a lot of people. And if you want to find out if you are one of those people, if you don't know already, then feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you have either directly or in the comments below. And while you are there, please take a moment to consider subscribing if you found this video helpful and join our community of music lovers. Thanks as always for watching and I'll hope to see you very soon.